The Nagorno-Karabakh War, referred to as the Artsakh Liberation War by Armenians, was an ethnic conflict that took place in the late 1980s to May 1994, in the enclave of Nagorno-Karabakh in southwestern Azerbaijan, between the majority ethnic Armenians of Nagorno-Karabakh backed by the Republic of Armenia, and the Republic of Azerbaijan. As the war progressed, Armenia and Azerbaijan, both former Soviet republics, entangled themselves in a protracted, undeclared war in the mountainous heights of Karabakh as Azerbaijan attempted to curb the secessionist movement in Nagorno-Karabakh. The enclave's parliament had voted in favor of uniting itself with Armenia and a referendum, boycotted by the Azerbaijani population of Nagorno-Karabakh, was held, whereby most of the voters voted in favor of independence. The demand to unify with Armenia, which began anew in 1988, began in a relatively peaceful manner, however, in the following months. As the Soviet Union's disintegration neared, it gradually grew into an increasingly violent conflict between ethnic Armenians and ethnic Azerbaijanis, resulting in claims of ethnic cleansing by both sides. Intra-ethnic clashes between the two broke out shortly after the parliament of the Nagorno-Karabakh Autonomous Oblast in Azerbaijan voted to unify the region with Armenia on 20 February 1988. The declaration of secession from Azerbaijan was the final result of a territorial conflict regarding the land, as Azerbaijan declared its independence from the Soviet Union and removed the powers held by the enclave's government. The Armenian majority voted to secede from Azerbaijan and in the process proclaimed the unrecognized Republic of Nagorno-Karabakh. Full-scale fighting erupted in the late winter of 1992. International mediation by several groups including the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe failed to bring an end resolution that both sides could work with. In the spring of 1993, Armenian forces captured regions outside the enclave itself, threatening the involvement of other countries in the region. By the end of the war in 1994, the Armenians were in full control of most of the enclave and also held and currently control approximately 9% of Azerbaijan's territory outside the enclave. As many as 230,000 Armenians from Azerbaijan and 800,000 Azeris from Armenia and Karabakh have been displaced as a result of the conflict. A Russian-brokered ceasefire was signed in May 1994 and peace talks, mediated by the OSCE Minsk Group, have been held ever since by Armenia and Azerbaijan. Background The territorial ownership of Nagorno-Karabakh today is still heavily contested between Armenians and Azerbaijanis. Called Artsakh by Armenians, its history spans over two millennia, during which it came under the control of several empires. The current conflict has its roots in events following World War I. Shortly before the Ottoman Empire's capitulation in the war, the Russian Empire collapsed in November 1917 and fell under the control of the Bolsheviks. The three nations of the Caucasus, Armenians, Azerbaijanis and Georgians, previously under the rule of the Russians, declared the formation of the Transcaucasian Federation which dissolved after only three months of existence. The conflict is further challenged by ethnic differences between the majority Christian Armenians and minority Muslim Azerbaijanis. Armenian-Azerbaijani warfighting soon broke out between the First Republic of Armenia and the Azerbaijan Democratic Republic in three specific regions, Nakhchivan, Zangazur in Karabakh itself, in Azerbaijan. Armenia and Azerbaijan quarreled about the putative boundaries of the three provinces. The Karabakh Armenians attempted to declare their independence but failed to make contact with the Republic of Armenia. Following the defeat of the Ottoman Empire in World War I, Armenian General Andrinik Kozinian entered Karabakh with military success and was headed towards the region capital of Shusha in December 1918. 
British troops occupied the South Caucasus in 1919, and the British command suggested Andronix ease his offence and allow the conflict to be solved at the Paris Peace Conference. Afterward, the British provisionally affirmed Azerbaijani statesman Khosrov Bey Sultanov as the Governor-General of Karabakh and ordered him to squash any unrest in the region. Afterward followed the Shusha massacre of an estimated 20,000 Armenians. Soviet division two months later however, the Soviet 11th Army invaded the Caucasus and within three years, the Caucasian republics were formed into the Transcaucasian SFSR of the Soviet Union. The Bolsheviks thereafter created a seven-member committee, the Caucasus Bureau, under the supervision of the People's Commissar for Nationalities, the future Soviet ruler Joseph Stalin. The Kavboro was tasked to head up matters in the Caucasus. On 4 July 1921 the committee voted 4 to 3 in favor of allocating Karabakh to the newly created Soviet Socialist Republic of Armenia but a day later the Kavboro reversed its decision and voted to leave the region within Azerbaijan SSR. The Nagorno-Karabakh Autonomous Oblast was created in 1923, leaving it with a population that was 94% Armenian. The reversal was substantiated with the economic connections the region had with Azerbaijan. The capital was moved from Shusha to Kankendi, which was later renamed as Stepanakert. Armenian and Azeri scholars have speculated that the decision was an application of the principle of divide and rule by Soviet Union. This can be seen, for example, by the odd placement of the Nikhichevan exclave which is separated by Armenia but is a part of Azerbaijan. Others have also postulated that the decision was a goodwill gesture by the Soviet government to help maintain good relations with Ataturks. Turkey. Over the following decades of Soviet rule the Armenians retained a strong desire for unification of Nagorno-Karabakh with Armenia, a name that some members of the Armenian Communist Party attempted to accomplish. First Secretary of the Communist Party of Armenia Agassi Kanjan was murdered by deputy head of the NKVD Lavran Tiberia after submitting Armenian grievances to Stalin, which included requests to return Nagorno-Karabakh and Nikitshevan to Armenia. The Armenians insisted that their national rights had been suppressed and their cultural and economic freedoms were being curtailed. Revival of the Karabakh issue After Stalin's death, Armenian discontent began to be voiced. In 1963, around 2,500 Karabakh Armenians signed a petition calling for Karabakh to be put under Armenian control or to be transferred to Russia. Also in 1963, there were violent clashes in Stepanakert, leading to the death of 18 Armenians. In 1965 and 1977, there were large demonstrations in Yerevan, which also called for unifying Karabakh with Armenia. As the new General Secretary of the Soviet Union, Mikhail Gorbachev came to power in 1985. He began implementing his plans to reform the Soviet Union. These were encapsulated in two policies, Perestroika and Glasnost. While perestroika had more to do with economic reform, glasnost or openness granted limited freedom to Soviet citizens to express grievances about the Soviet system itself and its leaders. Capitalizing on this new policy of Moscow, the leaders of the regional Soviet of Karabakh decided to vote in favor of unifying the autonomous region with Armenia on 20 February 1988. The resolution read, welcoming the wishes of the workers of the Nagorno-Karabakh Autonomous Region to request the Supreme Soviets of the Azerbaijani SSR and the Armenian SSR to display a feeling of deep understanding of the aspirations of the Armenian population of Nagorno-Karabakh and to resolve the question of transferring the Nagorno-Karabakh Autonomous Region from the Azerbaijani SSR to the Armenian SSR.
at the same time to intercede with the Supreme Soviet of the USSR to reach a positive resolution on the issue of transferring the region from the Azerbaijani SSR to the Armenian SSR. On 24 February, Boris Kevorkov, the Nagorno-Karabakh Autonomous Region Party Secretary and an Azerbaijan loyalist, was dismissed. Karabakh Armenian leaders complained that the region had neither Armenian language textbooks in schools nor in television broadcasting, and that Azerbaijan's Communist Party General Secretary, Haydar Aliyev had extensively attempted to Azerify the region and increase the influence and the number of Azeris living in Nagorno-Karabakh while at the same time reducing its Armenian population. By 1988, the Armenian population of Karabakh had dwindled to nearly three-quarters of the total population. The movement was spearheaded by popular Armenian figures and found support among intellectuals in Russia as well. According to journalist Thomas Deval, some members of the Russian intelligentsia, such as the dissident Andrei Sakharov, expressed support for Armenians. More prominent support for the movement among the Moscow elite was interpreted by some in the public. In November 1987 Humanité published the personal comments made by Abel Agenbegian, an economic advisor to Gorbachev to Armenians living in France, in which he suggested that Nagorno-Karabakh could be ceded to Armenia. Prior to the declaration, Armenians had begun to protest and stage worker strikes in Yerevan, demanding a unification with the enclave. This prompted Azeri counter-protests in Baku. After the demonstrations in Yerevan to demand unification of Nagorno-Karabakh with Armenia began, Gorbachev met with two leaders of the Karabakh movement, Zori Balayan and Silvikar Putikian on 26 February 1988. Gorbachev asked them for a one-month moratorium on demonstrations. When Kian returned to Armenia the same evening, she told the crowds that Armenians had triumphed, although Gorbachev hadn't made any concrete promises. According to Svante Cornell, this was an attempt to pressure Moscow. On March 10, Gorbachev stated that the borders between the republics would not change, in accordance with Article 78 of the Soviet Constitution. Gorbachev also stated that several other regions in the Soviet Union were yearning for territorial changes and redrawing the boundaries in Karabakh, would thus set a dangerous precedent. But the Armenians viewed the 1921 Kavboro decision with disdain and felt that in their efforts they were correcting a historical error through the principle of self-determination, a right also granted in the constitution. Azeris, on the other hand, found such calls for relinquishing their territory by the Armenians unfathomable and aligned themselves with Gorbachev's position. On 19 February 1988, during the seventh day of the Armenian rallies, the first counter-protest was held in Baku. The poet Bakhti Yavahabzada and the historian Suleiman Alarub published an open letter in the newspaper Azerbaijan, declaring that Karabakh was historically Azerbaijani territory. Askaran and some gate ethnic infighting soon broke out between Armenians and Azerbaijanis living in Karabakh. It is claimed as early as the end of 1987 Azerbaijanis from the villages of Garpan and Megro in Armenia were forced to leave their homes as a result of tensions between them and their Armenian neighbors and in November 1987 two freight cars full of Azerbaijanis are alleged to have arrived at the train station in Baku. In later interviews, the mayors of the two villages denied that any such tension existed at the time and no such documentation has been adduced to support the notion of forced expulsions. On 20 February 1988 two Azerbaijani trainee female students in Stepanek at hospital were allegedly raped by Armenians. On the 22nd of February 1988 a direct confrontation between Azerbaijanis and Armenians near the town of Askaran in Nagorno-Karabakh degenerated into a skirmish. 
During the clashes two Azerbaijani youths were killed. One of them was probably shot by a local policeman, possibly an Azerbaijani, either by accident or as a result of a quarrel. On 27 February 1988, while speaking on Baku's central television, the Soviet deputy procurator Alexander Katasev reported that two inhabitants of the Agdam district fell victim to murder and gave their Muslim names. The clash in Askarin was the prelude to the pogroms in Sumgate, where emotions, already heightened by news about the Karabakh crisis, turned even uglier in a series of protests starting on 27 February. Speaking at the rallies, Azerbaijani refugees from the Armenian town of Garpin accused Armenians of murder and atrocities. According to the Soviet media, these allegations were disproved and many of the speakers were reportedly agents provocateurs. Within hours, a pogrom against Armenian residents began in Sumgate, a city some 25 kilometers north of Baku. The pogroms resulted in the deaths of 32 people, according to official Soviet statistics. Although many Armenians felt that the true figure was not reported, nearly all of Sumgate's Armenian population left the city after the pogrom. Armenians were beaten, raped, mutilated and killed both on the streets of Sumgate and inside their apartments during three days of violence that only subsided when Soviet armed forces entered the city and quelled much of the rioting on 1 March. The manner in which they were killed reverberated among Armenians, recalling memories of the Armenian genocide. On 23 March 1988 the Supreme Soviet of the Soviet Union rejected the demands of Armenians to cede Nagorno-Karabakh to Armenia. Troops were sent to Yerevan to prevent protests against the decision. Gorbachev's attempts to stabilize the region were to no avail, as both sides remained equally intransigent. In Armenia, there was a firm belief that what had taken place in the region of Nakhichevan would be repeated in Nagorno-Karabakh. Prior to its absorption by Soviet Russia, it had a population which was 40% Armenian. By the late 1980s, its Armenian population was virtually non-existent.